been wanting to make this video for a hot minute, so I'm super excited to finally be getting it together to create it for you. These are the kind of videos that I loved to watch when I was a novice or thinking about going back to school. So in this one, I'm going to be showing what I carry with me, what's in my NP bag. Uh, yes, I carry a book bag. I used to as a student, and then I thought I'd become a cool kid and carry a purse as a new NP, and then I circled back around to carrying a book bag so I can get all the stuff there. But anyways, in this video, we're gonna be talking about the things that I, you, these are tools that I use to help me do my job. Some of them I have used on the reg since day one. Some of them have evolved over time. So I'll kind of give you some um, examples of things that I thought would be helpful that, that were helpful that I really don't need as much anymore. Some of these are physical products. Some of these are virtual products. So at the very end, I'm gonna tell you about my new favorite app favoritest app in the whole wide world and it is a game changer my friends so stick around for that if we haven't met yet my name is Bree I'm an RNNP mentor interview strategist and content creator welcome to the channel okay so yes isn't that lovely isn't that lovely it's got all the things in it all the stuff all the things um, so I'm going to show you what I carry with me now as a quote unquote seasoned NP. I don't know at what point you consider yourself seasoned, but I'm five years in. So things that, I, I mean, I still feel like I need things. I work with a lot of people who just show up with a pair of keys and they're good to go. I'm not that person though. I need a lot of stuff. I'm very, very visual. So I like a lot of stuff. I also have a hard time remembering things. So you're going to see a theme in this video. <laughs> tips, tools, things you can use to help you remember all the details. So let's get started. First things first, um, I always bring my computer to work with me. Um, I did as a student and I still do now. Now at this point in my career, it's really helpful if there are more APPs than there are computers in our office. I can pull up here my EMR and very quickly write notes. Also, if we're in a very long sign out at the end of the day, I can be working on it. I don't often do that, but I do see a lot of other people do that. It's just a good way to like multitask. I also use it um, to like surf. I just find it's quicker. It's easier to, you know, it's quicker to respond. I'm gonna get more instantaneous gratification when I'm looking for multiple research articles if I'm just pulling it up here. Um, so I, yes, I bring my computer with me every day. Students that come around with me, um, and I don't think I did this when I was a student, I don't know why, but students that come around with me will bring it and when we have free time, they will start working on their logs. So all the case logs you have to enter that takes for freaking ever. If you can finish them before you leave for the end of the day, uh, it is a huge weight off of your shoulders. So bring your computer with you. The next thing is gonna be notebooks. Um, I always, almost always have one spiral bound notebook with me. And at this point in my life, now what I use this for is more for writing down like my YouTube and my business stuff, things that I need to work on, things I'm doing research on. I find that when I write it out, I retain it better. So that's what I use this for now. When I'm creating content, I'll sketch it all out on here. Uh, but when I was a student, I brought a notebook with like this with me and I would just take notes. I found that if I wrote like tips, things that I wanted to remember from clinicals on like the handoff sheet, I would lose those. And it wasn't all in one spot. Whereas this way, I know it's all in here. And while it may be all over the map, as far as what it is, if I'm doing a rotation with, you know, the ENT group this week, all my ENT notes are in one section, even if they don't flow real well together, you know? So I always have a notebook. But again, I, I am a very uh, visual person. I like to write a lot. I learn by repetitively writing things. So for me, this has been very helpful. I also carry around lots of these kind of things. Anytime you see someone walking down the halls with a couple pieces of paper, or even a book of papers folded up like this stuck in their back pocket, they're probably a provider of some sort. It's usually very, very thick. Okay, and I carry two different types of lists with me when I go to work. One is like a hand up, one is a one is a census list that has all the patients within our group um, under our entire service. So that when somebody says, hey, do you have this patient? I can quickly pull it up and I'm like, oh yeah, 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 we sure do. And then the other one, and that's also where I put down information about new calls I get, new consults or admits, new people, I put on that sheet. So I remember to update that list at the end of the day. The other list I bring with me is my handoff. And I'm trying to see if there's any HPI information on here. I don't know. 
don't know if there's privacy information on there, but this is, okay. So what I essentially do is for each patient that I am directly overseeing that day that I'm assigned to, I will print off what's called a handoff sheet. My EMR allows me to do this. If I didn't, I would just take a blank piece of paper and I would do all of my workup, all the things I look up every single day on every single patient I put on here and I have one page per patient. And as the day, days go by during my week, I will bring my second favorite thing, which is lots of colored pens. I use different colored pens for each day that I'm there during the week so that I know what happened on each day. And then I don't have to keep redoing this list every single day. I can just add to it. Um, so this, this is why the second and third days are much easier than the first days, at least for shift work. This works very well for shift work kind of stuff. Um, but colored pens, I love, like I'm obsessed with colored pens. For those of us who can't retain information or have a hard time keeping patients straight, it's very, very helpful. I do carry a stethoscope with me. Now, okay, a lot of people say they don't carry stethoscopes anymore. They just use like the disposable ones that we use at the hospital. And there's always extra stethoscopes around if you need it. But the thing is, I can't hear Jack with those. So I like to carry my own. Um, typically speaking, I just leave one at each site where I work. But the next thing, and um, some of you young whippersnappers are gonna laugh, but I have both. <laughs> Um, virtual calendars, multiple ones of them, and a big fat physical calendar. It's a big one. I just, uh, again, I need it all to be written out, color coded, so I bring my calendar with me every day. So organizing all of this, juggling all the things and all the roles, uh, I find much easier when I have a physical calendar. So yes, I still carry one of those. I also make sure I always have around some bright post-it notes. Um, as I'm thinking of things throughout the day, whether it is a grocery list for the next day, or things that I needed to take care of before the end of the day, or if you know, a physician calls me back that I needed to pass something on, it all goes on here and I stick it on my list. Example number 101, why Brianna is getting old. Uh, yes, I can have readers with me. I used to carry them with me just because episodically I found it easier to read things with them. Now, it's like an everyday occurrence. <clears throat> and the biggest, point in my life where I find I need these, particularly at work, is when I'm doing a procedure where I have to thread a needle, where I need to thread a wire through something. I cannot feel like I'm me. I'm sitting here like this and you're all sterile up and there's no way you can put glasses on at that point. And then you realize you're a day late and dollar short and you cannot see and you're holding it 20 feet back and you just should have put on a pair of readers before you started the procedure. Uh, all the nurses that I work with can attest to this because they've all heard me say this. Damn, come in, why don't I put the readers on? So readers. I also would find it very hard to work without my Apple Watch. I love it. And you clearly don't need me to elucidate for you all of the wonderful qualities of an Apple Watch. You guys probably all already have them as well. But in particular, I love it when I'm doing something like if I'm talking with a family and I can't pull out my phone or if I'm in a procedure and I can't pull out my phone and someone's trying to contact me. I love just getting that thump notification that someone is trying to get in touch with me and I can kind of quickly look down and see if it's important or not. If it's something I need to stop what I'm doing and take care of. Many, many aspects of my work as a critical care provider is being accessible at all times. So that feeling of being disconnected, even if for you know a half hour, an hour, feels it's a little bit panic inducing. So <laughs> I love the Apple Watch for that reason. Also, okay, and this, <laughs> I'm gonna try and do this without sounding completely pretentious, but um, for the people that I went to school with, y'all are gonna laugh because, you know, I, we, <laughs> okay. Sometimes people can sound very prideful when they come across as, you know, like that savior complex of I have to carry around this life-saving tool with me in case someone crashes in front of my face so I can save them. It just sounds a little pretentious and I don't love it, but <laughs> I do carry an angiocath with me. It is generally in my white coat pocket with me because you know, I know why people say this now. I know why people say they need that cricothyroidotomy knife, AKA the scalpel, in case you need to quickly get an emergency access airway. It's because if you've ever been in a situation where you couldn't, seconds matter. And during COVID, there were so many people popping pneumos. Um, you have to act very, very quickly. And these are very hard to find. Um, I'm not even sure they're on the crash cart. If they are, nobody can find them. And when you tell them a long needle, two inches of them is long. I need bigger than that. I need something that I can get in the chest quickly to reinflate so that they don't code or they stop coding. So I love these, an angiocath. Um, I haven't, since COVID, like the huge census surge, I haven't needed it for anything, um, but it makes me feel a little better having it in my pocket. <laughs> 
Okay, now let's move on to the virtual products that I use, which are possibly even more important than these physical things that I carry with me on a daily basis. Most of them are apps. So I could not do my job without a good medical calculator. I use MDCalc and MediCalc. Those are my go-tos. For some reason, they each have a little bit different calculations. There's some you can find on one and some that you can't, you have to, so I have to have both for what I do. I love it because I don't have to have these formulas memorized. And even if I did have them memorized, it would just take me too long because math is not my strong suit. Now, having said that, you should memorize Winter's formula. If you're working in an ICU, you should know how to calculate Winter's formula like that because you're gonna have to do it a million times, all day, every day, all day, every day. Um, Apocrates, which is not a daily occurrence for me, but I think it's just because I work in the inpatient setting. So I love Apocrates for like outpatient drugs. Outpatient drug reference, it is very quick and very easy. There are links to the literature review there if you need it, but the, and I'm not talking, this is not an in-depth, this is not like an up-to-date, which is my next recommendation. It's not like an extensive summation of uh, like a narrative of how to diagnose and treat something, but it is a very quick reference guide. If you already know that you're going to treat a strap with amoxicillin, I can't remember what the dose is for this weight, blah, blah, blah. You just quickly go on there and look. Um, so I feel like my outpatient friends would use it a whole lot more. And if I was outpatient, I'd use it a lot. Um, I use it a lot in my personal life too. <laughs> up to date, as I already said, love, love, love up to date. Make sure that you are logged in when you are using it. If you're at your work computer and you're using up to date, make sure that you're logged in because for everything that you study on up to date, everything that you read, the time that you spend on that app, you can accrue CME. My favoriteest app in the whole wide world, both professionally and personally right now is called Slidebox. And I'm gonna record a video on my phone so I can show you what it looks like. It is perfect. Okay, so this app is called Slidebox. It's this one here. Um, let me get you back to a screen where you can see. So essentially this allows you, it'll bring up all your latest pictures and you just go through and sort them. If you wanna throw them in the trash, you can. Like this one, I'm gonna just trash, you just swipe up. If you wanna sort them into one of these albums, you just click on where it's gonna go. So like I have one that's quotes. Um, so I could put that in there. Anyways, you get the drift. Um, but when you want to very quickly access a picture, a screenshot that you took that is very helpful to you at work, you just go to your albums. I have one that's labeled clinical tips and screenshots. And this is really, really great for these visual things like branches of the bronchial airways. So it's just something I want to very quickly look at. I know it's right here and I can refresh myself real quickly before I go and do something like that. Or even like, um, like here's a protocol from the hospital, how we go through the PERT algorithm, if whether or not this patient needs to be um, triggering a PERT team referral. So it's very algorithmic. I can't memorize it though every time I have to look at it. So instead of logging into the computer, go into the section where the protocols are, finding it and or printing it out, I've just got a screenshot saved here and I can just very quickly reference it. So I love it for that kind of thing. You kind of get to know what you have in your arsenal here. Um, so yeah, this is one of my favoriteest new apps. I also you know, outside of work have many other files that are any other, many other folders where I'll sort things, particularly for Instagram, like pictures and things like that. So anyways, I just love this app. So what was different when I was a student is that I carried a heck of a lot more with me. I took, um, I took all my reference materials with me. I, during downtime, um, I spent a good deal of time reading reference materials and I don't love ebooks. I find them harder to focus on. I, I want to take notes. I want to write on them. I want to flag them. Again, I'm just sort of a physical, physical touch kind of person when it comes to learning. So I carried a lot of books with me. Um, and some of my favorites that I still recommend to this day for students and new MPs is the ICU book. And yes, yes, I carry this thing with me. Look at this. Um, once I got a job and had a little bit of office space, I keep a copy there in my file folder. Um, I also carried this book with me. Love this book for ICU. Um, but back to the notes thing. So I, being the kind of personality that I am, and this is not going to appeal to everyone, but it worked very, very well for me when I was in school. And as I was learning, I would take one subject at a time and I would make beautiful notes on them. So like, um, if I was doing some stuff on liver, I would draw out the liver to the best of my abilities. Cause I'm not an artist. I would identify all the ducts. I would identify all the veins, all the different lobes. And then I would do a little bit of A and P on it. And then I would take information from different places. So like things I learned in class, things I learned from the review course, things I learned from different YouTube videos I watched, things I learned from clinicals, and I would kind of put them all together. 
So I did that over time and it took me a long, a very long period of time, but I accrued a lot of notes and I still use them to this day. So I sorted them all into different file folders and, and luckily at work, I have a filing cabinet. So I just have it organized by different organ systems and it's very easy. I mean, I'm very visual so I can recall things like, okay, I know exactly where that is written and on what paper, but I can't remember what it says off the top of my head. So I may have to go back to it real quick. Like, and it makes sense to me because it's me, you know? Um, I also pull them a lot out for my students because some of it has some very like, again, introductory or basic level information on it. So it helps me to kind of describe things to them in a way that comes from a place of how I was learning to understand it when I was new. So yes, save your notes. You may have a real good opportunity to use them in the future. Okay, my last thing is a shameless plug, but I do think it can be helpful. Um, note writing book. So I wrote this book on how to, it's a cheat sheet I wrote on 11 of the most common ICU problems. Um, it's a DMR template and then a little bit of behind the scenes on why we do the things that we do for each of those problems. But I would have really liked um, a guide on note writing specific to the ICU when I was new. Um, so that's ended up why I wrote this book. But this would have been helpful as a student as well. And the last thing I want to say is this. You really don't need things. You really don't. Um, plenty of people that I work with walk into work with their keys and they're some of the most brilliant people I have ever worked alongside. It just appeals to the kind of person that you are if you have all of these um, tools and resources available to you if you need them. And I am that kind of person. So for me, this is what I carry. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in.